This is the Discovery New York City Open Data, and I am a volunteer Open Data Ambassador. Um, I, in my day job, I work for New York City uh, Department of Homeless Services. I've worked for the uh, City of New York for about uh, almost eight years now, um, and I do software development and data analysis. And I, you know, have been before working in city government, I was really interested in uh, the potential of open data to uh, really make the workings of government more transparent and to help hold government accountable. So I'm really excited that uh, this program has been developed to kind of expand that. Um, I've been a long term um participant or, or in Beta NYC events. Uh, so working in government for me was a natural extension of uh, civic tech. Uh, so let's talk about today's agenda. Um, we are mostly through the welcome and introduction. Uh, after that, we will go into a brief history of New York City open data. Then we'll do an overview of New York City open data. Um, then we're going to look at how to filter open data, how to visualize open data, uh, and then we'll go through some tools that you can use to further explore open data. And then we're going to leave a lot of time at the end for some questions and answers. And then Jazzy's going to tell you some more uh, details about how you can stay involved with uh, everything open data and open data week. So. Uh, any any questions so far before we get started? I think um, as we go, if there's a question, if you want to put it in the chat, I have that open on my other monitor, so I can kind of look at that, and Jazzy's monitoring that as well. If there are any sort of um, links or resources, uh, Jazzy's going to try to put those links in the in the chat. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, if you have a question while I'm while I'm talking, um, put it in the chat and I'll try to address it if I can in real time. Otherwise, we'll get to it at the end. OK, so right. So I think just a little a little bit more about the open data um, ambassador program. I mean, I think Jazzy covered it, um, but it really is an opportunity to kind of share uh, the potential of how we can use this resource that New York City has been a pioneer in. Um, so I'm really happy to be a, a part of that. Um, and if you are interested in learning more about that, ask us at the at the at the Q and A, and we can tell because there's been um, this group of ambassadors can tailor this presentation to other types of organizations. Um, specifically if they're interested in something else and kind of for beginners or for more advanced audiences too. Um, so I think some of the, okay, uh, sorry, I'm just in, okay, here we go. Yeah, so this this curriculum that we're going to look at today was developed in partnership with the New York City analytics team who's at um, the Office of Technology and Innovation, as well as with their partners at, at Beta NYC which is uh, the city's, um, I would say, premier civic tech organization. Um, and it's great that this partnership exists and this curriculum is really um, you know, our starting off point, but if anybody's interested in more specific things, we can veer off as we go along. But I'm gonna go through the brief history of New York City open data. So uh, open data, it, defining open data can be quite simple. It's government data that's made accessible to the public, to us all. Um, and you know, because of its connection to data, it might be seen as like a 21st century phenomenon, um, but it's one that accompanies the growing importance of data in our everyday lives. Uh, and it stems from the increased creation by government over the past decades in New York and around the world. But there is a long history of similar efforts to make government information more accessible and government itself more accountable and transparent. Um, so to better understand how we got to where we are here with the focus on data, we're going to briefly touch on some developments that led to the present state of New York City open data. So um, 
Before we go to the past, let's start with today. Uh, what does open data look like today? Public data is available about nearly every facet of city life. This is an illustration of a street that shows some of New York City open data and how it interacts with the physical environment. For every paved street, recycling bin, parking ticket, or restaurant inspection, there's a data point available. How many people here have used open data? If you want to raise, okay, I got one, two. Yeah, we got, um, if you, anyone wants to use the raise hand feature or, okay, I got, I, I, so I think everyone here has used, used open data, you've used open data in New York City or in another place. I mean, I think um, if you have used it, if you want to, um, uh, what, what are some of the data sets that you've used from New York City or from another place? If you want to drop that into the chat, that'd be, that'd be helpful. And if you think you haven't used it, but you have a smartphone that has location-aware apps, that's based on GPS, so it was developed by the federal government, or if you've ever checked the weather, that's based on uh, National Weather Service data. So we all use open data all the time. And Allison is saying, um, Oh, composting and recycling info. Great. Okay, Allison, we'll get into that in a little bit later. Um, we can get into that specifically. And 3D geometry for buildings. Okay. Uh, and then there's another question. Yes, uh, Omar, the, the um, webinars will be uploaded somewhere and we'll, we'll uh, Jazzy will uh, mention where that is at the end of the presentation and demographics data at public schools. Okay, so great, yeah, keep putting uh, comments in the chat if there's a uh, specific open data that you've used or that you're interested in learning more about. Um, but I think there's a, I'm getting a good sense that there is a pretty varied experience um, and with some specific data sets and there's some specific interest here. So I'll try to get into some of those areas a little bit later. So um, we're gonna go to the roots of open data back to the late 19th century and early 20th century, the progressive era reforms that were intended to make government more efi efficient to fight corruption. So this is a picture of the, the city record, um, which was created during the progressive era of government reform, which was a period when there were good government groups that were trying to hold um, government accountable, which at the time was under the control of Boss Tweed, a former New York senator uh, who was a very large landowner and used his position of power to uh, give away a lot of things to his friends. <laughs> and so the city record was a way to um, uh, mandate that whatever the city government was public information so that people could kind of see into what the, the, the doings of government so they could see if there was any corruption at that time. Um, so this was created, the city record, I'm trying to get the year, uh, 1890, no, 1897. Where is the first year? This is issue number one. Oh, here it is, yeah, 18, 1873. And it's still in publication today. Um, so now it, the, this is the print, picture of the print edition, but if you go to nyc. NYC no nyc.gov slash city record, you can see all of the, the historical issues of city record and there's a great um, functionality to search past issues. So anytime there's new procurement or anytime there's new job postings or um, a new agency created or a mayoral press release, it goes in the city record. It's a pretty amazing resource. Uh, jumping ahead to the 1960s and 70s, uh, this is a time when there were freedom of information laws passed around the country, um, it, federally and locally. So uh, this was, uh, the picture here is a picture of um, a memo um, about um, investigating Martin Luther King Jr. And this, a journalist kind of knew that something was going on and they made a request to get this information. So the freedom of information laws made information, government information available, but only on request. So if you knew what you were looking for, if you're an investigative journalist who might have a source but is looking for supporting documents, the freedom of information laws FOIA or FOIL 
um, allowed you to to kind of get that documentation from from government, and this was a big deal. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, it's, yeah. this was a big deal, but again, it was only available on request. Fast forward to 1993. And New York City did something interesting where they released the public data directory. And this is the subset of the information that was available through FOIL, um, just the information that is stored as data um, or um, kind of in a mach machine readable kind of standard format. And it's made it more accessible by providing a listing to what data agencies have. So in contrast to FOIL, the person, you might not know what you're looking for, but this directory could help you know what government is creating. Uh, and this actually still exists in some, uh, some of the from my mouse. Uh, some of these data sets and the systems that are used from 1993 still actually exist in government. Okay, so fast forward to 2012, uh, New York City was a pioneer in, in signing an open data law um, to require that all government data that New York City produces in all of the different city agencies and mayoral agencies is made public by default and is put on an open data portal. Um, the portal is located at nyc.gov backslash open data. So we're going to explore that portal in a little bit more detail. But this, this is really um, an extension of that directory not only is it a directory of what data sets are available, um, it's you can search the data and visualize the data and download the data from this portal. Uh, so it's taking it one step further. And open data laws were signed to the federal government and um, open data, uh, you know, uh, in some places it was mayoral, um, um, declar I can't remember, uh, I'm missing the word, a declaration or sort of a, uh, but in New York City, it was a law, which means that no matter what the administration is, uh, the open data law stays. It's very hard to repeal a law. Um, so the open data in New York City is much more uh, public and long lasting than in, in some other places. And these trainings are also really important to kind of demonstrating what open data is and why it's important so that we can maintain this resource moving forward. So uh, today, there's over a million visitors each year that go to the open data portal. There's 3,000 data sets. And these data sets are made possible by a network of approximately 100 open data coordinators that are across all the different city agencies, offices, and commissions. And then more people than that in the agencies and commissions that are part of producing the, and maintaining the data that then the open data coordinators work with the open data team to make available to the public. So it's really a huge effort um, to identify, structure, document, publish, update, and share all this agency data. So let's uh, dive in. And we're going to go through an overview of New York City open data today. So um, I'm going to switch over to a live demo here. Uh, this is the open data website, which you can access at um, nyc.gov backslash open data. So Jazzy, if you could put that in the chat, great. Um, let me switch over here. So that's the, the address, but also if you just search for NYC open data on your favorite search engine, it'll be the first link. So let's go there. Um, and so this is the homepage, and I'm just going to um, do a quick walkthrough of some important ways to navigate this um, um, website. And so there's a search bar where you can enter search terms, um, or you can click on data. And if we do that, we come to a page where you can navigate based on just the newest data sets, popular data sets, or if we scroll down, data sets by category or data sets by agency. So if you know what agency you're you're interested in, you can go here and just look at a list of what's available available from that agency. But let's go back to the home page and let's type in 311. Okay. So 311 uh, is city service that I'm sure most of you know about. Hopefully you've you've used. 
at some point in your um, time here as a New York City resident, um, but it's really an amazing resource where you can get information about city services or uh, make complaints about things that are happening that need to be rectified. Um, so it receives requests constantly in 175 different languages, and there are over 3,600 government services that um, uh, it routes calls to address. Um, and I think there used to be a number, I can't remember the number of, we should, I was, li I'd like to have the number of the millions of calls it gets per day, but I can't remember, but it's millions. There's millions of calls um, every day that it gets or every month. Anyway, it's millions of calls a year. I don't remember how many it is per day. <laughs> um, okay. So 311 service quest. I'm going to go back to the live demo here. And so when I put in 311, we got the first link here is, you see multiple links here. We're going to deal with just this first one. This is showing us all the requests from 2010 to present. So what we're going to look at is how to read a data set. And, and we're going to go through when you're, what kind of questions should be asking as you're exploring a data set for the first part, for the first time. So when we click down that link, we come to the first page and we call this the primer page. And so this is just has a lot of metadata on it. Well, what is metadata? Does anyone, anyone know what metadata is? Anyone want to put a, um, answer in the, in the chat or, or, or unmute yourself and it's this mysterious term metadata. Yes. Okay. Timoni, you're exactly right. It's simply data about data. So very meta data about data. That's all it is. This is a page that has a lot of metadata on it. And we're going to go through what some of these, uh, what some of these things are. Okay. Okay. So, um, we have the title and the description. So the description, if you click more, there sometimes is information that's hidden about it, um, but that's just telling you, okay, what am I looking at? Um, and you might wanna just ask yourself the question, is this actually the data that I'm looking for? Um, you know, did I click on the wrong link? Is this actually what I'm looking for? Um, so the next thing I'd like to look at is this updated section. So this will tell you when the data was last updated, data last updated March 15th, um, when the metadata was updated and when it was created. So a, a question here that you can ask yourself is, is this data sufficiently current for the questions that I'm trying to, to answer? So next, we want to uh, look at this attachment here. Um, so this attachment is the data dictionary. So data dictionary will tell you some information about what you are looking at. And I'm going to open that in Excel. Second. Okay. So this is a really important um, document that will tell you about this data. So to tell you, you know, what, why is this created, some more information about um, how it's collected. Um, but then if we go over to the column information, the second tab down here, um, it gives you an explanation of each column that you're going to see in the data set. And then for some of the columns, you have expected and allowed values, um, some field limitations or additional notes. Um, so this this is really helpful as to kind of keep open as you're exploring the data because you might something unexpected might happen and if you look back in the in the uh, data dictionary you might be able to find something about let's say how a date is formatted so if we were looking something up by complete complete date um, what format would you expect to be it to be in? And I guess I actually just answered that question by highlighting it <laughs> before I asked it. So ap apologies there. But I think, you know, there's multiple ways that a date could be formatted. And if you, it's easy to get frustrated if you're looking for something in one way and you're saying, oh, nothing's showing up. Well, maybe let's look at the data dictionary and see if there's a specific format that it's in that's, that's, that's causing that. Mm. Okay, so 
going back to the the primer page um uh, this looking at that that data documentation here is really getting at the question do i understand this data set well enough to start using it so that's that's what that that um data dictionary is all about Okay. okay, and then so I'm going to scroll down and finally look at what's in this data set. So this section shows us that it has 32 million rows in 41 columns and what each row is. Each row is a 311 service request. Uh, and here, mainly I'm looking at, or the first question I'm asking is, is this data set too large for me to use as is with the tools that I'm that I'm familiar with using? And for example, Excel can open up um, a, a file that has about a million rows. So in order to use this in Excel, we would have to filter the data before we download it so that we could open it up in that tool. Um, right, so, okay. So let me go back to the page here. We're gonna do a quick recap. Okay, um, so read the title and description. We're asking, is this the data I'm looking for? Step two, check when the data was last updated so that we can find out if the data is sufficiently current. Step three, we're gonna review the data documentation so that we can know if we understand the data set well enough to start using it. And then finally, step four, we're gonna evaluate the size of the data set to see if it's too large for us to use. So those are some good rules of thumb for when you are ex uh, first exploring a new data set. So we're going to go back and look at the actual data. So back on this page, on the, on the primer page, if you see this view data, we're going to click here. And so uh, the open data platform just released this new view of the page. Um, and the presentation that we have is based on the old view. So I'm going to quickly switch back to this grid view so that um, the presentation that we have kind of matches up. But you can explore either one. Um, I'm going to go, so I'm clicking that switch to grid view. And now we see the data set here. And we're going to go over how to filter it. Because if you can see, there's 32 million rows. So we know that we need this to be smaller so that we can more easily use it. Um, and there's 41 columns. Um, okay, so, so sorry, I, I'm, I, there's something going on with when I'm clicking over to my other screen, but so that's what's the, the pause here. Sorry for the technical <laughs> uh, glitch here. Um, so how are we going to filter this? So let's let's filter. We're already in the filter. The filter kind of like pops up immediately. Um, actually, I, I, I want to back up one second. Um, I'm not signed in here, but if you do create an account and sign in, then as you create filters, uh, you can save that, and then that will be saved in your account so that you can come back to it later. Just going to do something simple, so I'm not worried about losing anything, but it's always a good idea to kind of sign in here so that you don't lose some of your work. <clears throat> so filter. If you click here, we can look at created date. So this is going to be an easy way to um, create a filter to narrow down the, the, the records. So this next operation dropdown will give us is or is not. is. So let's do is, uh, is before, is after. So I'm going to do is after. I'll just say this month. Actually, I'll just say that. I'll say this week. Okay, so I, I, I put the date in and then you have to make sure this this blue checkbox is checked is blue. Once it does that, now there's a you know running worm, the, the circle here, fetching row count. So that means it's still filtering. So we're gonna give this a minute to, to work. It's going, it's going, it's gonna take a couple minutes. Hmm, hmm. Okay, there it is, down to 23,000 rows. Okay, much better. But uh, for this, for our purposes today, let's narrow this down a little bit more. 
Is there anybody uh, taking suggestions for agency? Any agency data that, that people are interested in looking at? Uh, what's your favorite or least favorite city agency <laughs> that you would like to for us to focus on our exploration? I'll take the first one. Oh, DSNY. Okay, great. I love DSNY. That that really is a favorite one for me. I think uh, you know we we they used to have parades for the sanitation department, and they were huge parades where people would just show their love and appreciation for the people that pick up the trash and um, you know make city life possible. Uh, so I think maybe we should bring those parades back. That's just my opinion. Okay, agency. So we're going to go into agency. And so here, if we do is, we can also do contains that that sometimes makes it so that if there's like extra characters in the name, that might be easier to find. Um, but I don't remember exactly how this shows up in the data set. So I'm going to look at agency here back in my data dictionary. And so, oh, look, agency is the acronym. So the person who suggested that knows that the acronym for the sanitation department is DSNY, um, Department of Sanitation New York. But if you don't know that, um, you know, this data dictionary actually does like give you a full list here that you could look through. Um, but if you see the next one, this is the full name of the city agency. So that there's two ways to, to look for it. Uh, so if we look at actually the agency name and I just, and I put sanitation, I think this will work, contains. Yeah, okay, so we got that. But if I put sanitation in the agency field, nothing would show up. So that could be frustrating and that's a, a, um, why it's important to sort of look at that data dictionary to realize like there's two fields that are named very similarly, but if you don't know that the agency is the acronym and the agency name is the full name written out, um, then that could be that could be frustrating. So that's that's uh, one one tip there. Um, okay, so now we're down to 1900. I think that's enough. You know, and so you could filter it by complaint type or by other things if you're only interested in those. But we'll just leave that for now. You can also. Whoa, sorry. The, the last one I did want to show was. Uh, let's do borough. Ah, uh, there it is. So, borough. Um, okay, first person to type a borough in the chat will be the borough we're looking at. Any, any, uh, any, any let's see who did it. Uh, Staten Island. Okay, great. Let's see how many sanitation through and one service requests there were in Staten Island in this month so far. 940. Okay. So, yeah, we've got some street condition, illegal parking, block driveway, sewer. Oh, wait, uh, 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 I'm seeing different agencies here. So something must have happened. I think that's not clicked and that's not clicked. Okay, great, there. So you, yeah, just really make sure you, you're checking those boxes and seeing if they're checked. So something got unchecked and then we had other agencies in there and now we're back to just Department of Sanitation, 203 complaints in Staten Island, um, Department of Sanitation in this month. Electronics waste, appointment, dirty condition, et cetera. Okay, so that is much more manageable and maybe would help us there. Okay, so now from here, we have these records. And if we want to go and work with these records in another tool, we could just go to the export and then export in all these different file formats. Uh, I just I, I generally recommend a CSV for for tables because that's the the universal format that a lot um, Excel or Google Docs or a lot of other tools can open. Um, it has less formatting attached to it, uh, so you can just download it right here, um, and then open it up in in your tool and go from there. So that's kind of a basic workflow of just sort of filtering the data, and then getting the data onto your computer so that you can then manipulate it. The Open Data Portal also has 
a built-in visualization tool. So we're going to go through that now and look at some of the kind of like summary visualizations that you could create uh, about specific data sets as you're going through this exploration phase. But again, like you could just download it and use your own tool if you're more familiar or comfortable with that. But let's go through this. So it's prompting you, me to sign in, but I, which is a good idea. But right now I'm just going to do this here. Um, so one thing to note is that when you launch into the visualization tool, all your filters that you did when you were just in the data set view have been are gone now. So it's uh we're back to 32 million. So we have to reduce those numbers down again to a more manageable amount um, so that the visualization tool can um, work more quickly. If you leave it at that 32 million rows, this tool will take a long time to load and it might never load. So it that's a kind of an important note if you are using this that you do have to kind of start over here with the filters and, and it's a little bit different interface. Um, but we're going to create the exact same filters that we did previously. So I'm starting with created date. It's generally a good idea to start with created date. If you're limiting by time, that's gonna that's gonna like quickly narrow things down. Um, so that's you know just a suggested practice. Um, okay, relative date. So this has this feature relative date. So you can have you know, this quarter, this month. So that's helpful for us. We can say this month, that's what we did before. Um, okay, so there, let's see what it's, okay, now we're down to 110. I'm gonna add the next one, whoops. Oh, I guess here, this is, there's a fill, there's a search thing here that's a little bit faster. Oh, and which one was it? Agency or agency name? Agency name, sanitation. So this this like has a little bit different interface. You can search for things, which is a little bit help more helpful. Uh, but then you have to remember to, you know, oops, I unclicked it. It's like each each one of these things is a little nuanced. And if it's not working for you, just take a breath, think about what happened, and and try again. You know, because it's it's um. It's just like any software. The more you use it, the more you realize where things are. Um, but I did that incorrectly there. Okay, I searched for, I started typing it in, click on it, selected values is here. I don't wanna click on that because that will remove it. What I wanna do is click apply. Let's see if that worked. Okay, it's fetching row count. Looks, looks promising. Here we wait. Okay. 8,700 row records. The last filter, Borough, Staten Island. And we're down to 1,000. Great. Okay, so let me just go back to my notes for a second. So let's create a pie chart. Okay, so, oh, what is that? So this is not very useful. Um, let's look at the dimension. If we look at the dimension, that's going to be what it's summarizing. So I think uh, we noted before that there was different types of complaint types um, that go to the Department of Sanitation. So let's take a look at that. Complaint type. Okay, great. So now we can visualize and the majority 32% are um, electronic waste appointments followed by missed collection and dirty condition. So that's that's great. That's really interesting. This, this graph is a little confusing with all these small numbers. So you can go over to the left into the slice display options. And then we can say, let's just show five. And so then four, five, six, huh? That's Weird. Oh, it's in group other group of the ones is other. So here it is. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's five. Um, so that's yeah. I mean, actually, the, for this, that might make sense. Maybe I'll do four slices with the group others. Yeah, so then other anyway, you can mess around with that. But that's that's kind of a um, you know, that might be useful enough for for what you're doing in certain explorations to just create a, a pie chart to help you visualize the data. Um, so 
let's, we're gonna attempt to click the map button and see if it will map this. So this data does have longitude and latitude coordinates that can be used to map the information onto a map. Um, and this tool will also allow you to do that. Um, I guess before I go into there, you can also summarize it as bar charts. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of different ways that you can visualize this. Um, the key thing here is the dimension, filtering first, and then making sure you're choosing the right dimension um, to summarize your data with. So we're gonna, I'm gonna click on the map. This might take a minute and it might not work because um, I was trying it earlier and it was having a hard time loading. So I, it, like if nothing happens when I click on the map, I don't see anything happening. It might actually still be working. So we're gonna give it a minute. I'm gonna look at the other tab that I have where I tried to load a map earlier so I can show you what that looks like. But a little bit later on, I'm gonna show you a different mapping tool, which I personally like to use better than um, the built-in mapping visualization with the open data portal. Um, my personal workflow is to uh, download all of the data and then use tools that are capable of loading 32 million rows. But before I knew how to do that, I would um, you know, use the filtering method like I showed you on the on the uh, open on the data set view and download the subset of data I was interested in and then look at other tools. Um, but this is a good option if you're looking for some of those uh, quick visualizations. And let's see. Ooh, that's weird. It it did load the map, but it put it on the put it on Seattle. So did it load up oh, in this other version? So I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe it's something with like, I haven't given permission for my GPS to load in this, to be accessed by this browser. I'm not sure. But this is what the visualization for um, a map is on a slightly different set of filters. This is just all through in one request in the community board of uh, Queens Community Board 11 for yesterday. So huh, there wasn't that many, but that's the locations of these through one requests yesterday in Queens. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, let's move on to some other tools. I'm gonna switch over, I guess actually, let me pause here for a second. Um, any questions about what we just what we just covered, or does anyone want to um, look at one more filter before we move on? I think we're doing okay with time. Yeah. Doing good. Yeah. Um, so it's okay if you if 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 we we I I can move on to some other tools. Okay, if you want me to come back, we can come back to this later. But let's look at some other tools here. Yeah, skip ahead. Nathan, you have a question. Um, oh, yeah. Asking, is it okay to use the map data publicly? Do we need permission to include in publications, et cetera? Uh, oh, that is a great question. So this is open data that is that belongs to all of us. So you can use it. Yes, publicly, please do. Um, anything that's on the open data um, website is um, you're able to use publicly and you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to ask for permission. Um, and you can use it in publications, you can use it to make money off of, you can use it for non-making money things. Um, it's really a very open um, use license. Uh, it's there, the city does gather information about, um, yeah, it's public property, absolutely. The, the city does gather information that is about individuals that might include private information, but that is not published on the open data platform with few exceptions where there is pub personal information that is part of the public record, um, such as the salary of city employees, which is all also public record. Um, so yeah, this is this belongs to all of us and we can do whatever we want with it. So let's go into some tool, some other tools that use open data. 
there's a great resource uh, that the city put together that curates a list of maps that use open data. So nyc.gov backslash maps, uh, Jazzy put it in the chat. Thank you. Um, and these are tool, these are maps and tools that are created by city agencies, uh, as well as a couple that are created by other entities that use city data. Um, so let's launch this and look at a few, like all these are, a lot of these are really super useful, um, just as is, but also as a way to see what other people have done with open data sets. Um, trying to remember back to what people said they were interested in. Uh, yeah, the tree map. So you can look at the location of all the tree information about trees that were corrected, collected in the New York City tree census. Um, and I think there's another one based on the questions. I, I, so this one, just wanted to do a quick example here for, uh, I can't remember who made this. Yeah, yeah so Landmarks Preservation Commission um, created this map and it has the individual sites that are landmarks as well as the districts. Um, and, and I just wanted to give just a quick demo of something that I was just looking at to show you how easy it is to go, like, just just give you an idea of like where, how this map was created and that you can really, you really have at your fingertips access to the data and access to free tools that allow you to, um, you know, create maps like this for your, for your own purposes. So for this, for this data set, um, just going to type in landmarks. Uh, oops, uh, sorry, no, um, individual landmark sites. So this is the open data. And if you see, yeah, there's the different sites that sort of look like, you know, some of the sites that might be in this. I, I think that it might actually be a slightly different one than I'm looking at, but you get the idea here. If I click on export, um, and I'm going to download the spatial geospatial data, that's just data that can be mapped. So uh, the, these are all different formats, but GeoJSON is, and, sh and Shapefile are commonly used by other mapping programs. GeoJSON is a smaller file and is less confusing file type. So I usually just end up using GeoJSON. There's certain programs that you might need Shapefiles for. Um, but so if I save this to my downloads, and then I'm just going to quickly show you a tool that I really like for mapping called Felt. And this is a, I don't work for Felt. I don't know anybody who works for Felt. Um, but it really is amazing. And so I I'm, I'm created a new map. And then they hit this upload button. I click upload. And then just that. I'm going to create it as a data as a data layer, so it's not editable. Um, and if I click create, it's going to take like a, a minute here. It's processing. It's going to take about I think it'll take about a minute. Um, yep, we're halfway done. Wait for it. There, look. So now on this map, we have all those sites that look. You know, it's like the beginning of the beginning of this map. We could also get the point data from another layer on the city's open data portal and download that and put it in. Or maybe we're looking at landmark violations. So right there, you're just like two different data sets from the open data portal, drop them on a map and visually compare what you see. I think that's a really powerful capability that, that, that we have now. Um, so uh, that's one tool. Um, is this map gallery and in the map gallery there are lots of other great maps but i'll just highlight that one for now um another one in particular to highlight is population fact finder and it's a dashboard for exploring population profiles um when i was studying 
urban planning to get my master's. I really wish this site existed. <laughs> it used to be a lot more difficult to uh, do what you can do very easily with this site. So this is created by the amazing New York City planning department, uh, city planning's population division. Um, and there's just like an incredible array of digital products that have been created by a few different teams at New York City planning department uh, in the past few years. And this is one of them. You can look at the different census districts and if you click, you can see basic information. And then if you click here, you can look at view data and then there's a page for every single census tract. And then you can use it to compare to New York City or you can compare based on certain topics. Uh, and then you can get different data and look at changes over time. It's really like, it, it's incredible. And you can, it's fun to just sort of like look at your neighborhood or your old neighborhood and see how it's changed and, you know, in like uh, uh, age or or race or ethnicity and and like housing size, how things have changed over time. It's it's just, it's it's kind of, for a certain type of nerd, it's fun just to, to spend a lazy afternoon looking through the population fact finder. Um, Zola is another one that we want to highlight, and it's a dashboard examining zoning regulations, um, including flood, the flood maps, I, if I believe, are on here. So there's a, there's a lot of different things. There's, yeah, the waterfront, the coastal zone boundary. Yeah, so you can see, uh, is that the right one? No, no, that's the wrong one. Um, effective flood insurance maps and the preliminary flood insurance maps. So, right, yeah, then you can tell the different zones and we can zoom in, you know, and so you can overlay that with the different zonings that exist in different neighborhoods. So, uh, yeah, this is also an incredible resource that really just like expanded on these giant books that used to exist that you would have to flip through and have different books from different, the zoning and the zoning amendments. And this puts all of this information with a lot more contextually useful information on one map. Um, so a great place if you have specific like projects that you're working on where you're interested in uh, or um, like development projects or how they're affecting your neighborhood, but also just to learn about the city. This is another great one to spend another lazy afternoon exploring. Um, and then there's another page that on nyc.gov where the URLs there, um, it's project page. Uh, Jazzy, if you can put that in the chat too. Um, let's just go to that quickly. And so this is a kind of a highlight of a bunch of different projects that other people have made um, building on top of New York City open data. Um, so yeah, it, it's like ways to visualize New York City restaurant inspections, you know, that is used as part of a data journalism project. Um, you know, interesting, just people are interested in squirrels. Let's, ma let's map squirrels in Census Park because there was also a squirrel census <laughs> that, that was, that was uh, undertaken. Um, you know, and so there's a lot of, uh, yeah, just interesting projects from a variety of different um, angles. You know, some of them might be just entertainment, some of them might be advocacy, some of them might be, you know, just about specific issues. So this is a great place to look at what people have done with New York City open data. And they might be useful to you as is, or give you inspiration for what you might be able to do uh, with the, the data that's at your fingertips. And so and just a couple more quickly to highlight, Boundaries Map is a great resource when you're thinking about building up new tools uh, created by Beta NYC. Um, and it combines a lot of different boundary files so that you can look at overlapping voting districts or historic districts or council districts or, you know, so it's another great tool. Um, data to go NYC is an online mapping that brings the local New York City open data along with some federal and state data on a, on a really broad range of indicators. And it creates these amazing kind of graphs based on what you're looking at. Um, I've also spent a few afternoons on that website myself. And then finally, I think we have, or there's a couple more, WeGov. Uh, so uh, this was uh, built and maintained by a volunteer nonprofit organization, um, just some civic tech people who are tying together 
different data sets from New York City Open Data Portal and um, structuring it in a way that you can explore, um, you know, kind of profiles of different agencies, what they're spending their budgets on, um, what are some of the, what are the headcounts and how that's changed over time. This is also a really great resource for kind of trying to understand more about how New York City government works. Um, and then we have things that people have created, like for looking for volunteering or assistance, um, restaurant violation sites, interactive visualization of New York City trees, uh, site to um, look up park parking and camera violations. Um, so that's public information that we can then make actionable through sites like this. Um, and so many more. So I'm going to move on to the question section, I think right on time for questions. And, and if you want to raise your hand, put them in the, or put them in the chat, uh, we will get to as many questions as we can. So thanks. I hope this uh, pacing was okay. You know, it's still like uh, the Zoom, the Zoom Present hour long presentation is still, uh, you know, kind of an outer body experience. So, you know, um, yeah, give, give me some feedback, give me some questions. I hope this was useful. Um, let me know uh, what you want to uh, learn more about. If anyone wants to see any more demos or explore any tools, Nathan can do that too. No need to be shy. Ah, any great okay so a couple questions yeah give people some more time to to type nice um uh, thank, thanks omar I'm, I'm thanks for that feedback um any tips on how to work with the api uh thank thanks kate at the felt demo okay we'll get into the api in a second let me see if there's a couple other questions Tomunori has a question, so I'm going to ask him to unmute. Yeah. So, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, my question has um, something close to API, but uh, if we are using like specific tool, like uh, I use R, but I usually read the data in SPSS. Uh, is uh, is there any way to download the open data in a specific format so that you can directly read into the software? Yes. Yes, there is. Um, and so uh, let me address that question with the API and it's going to be a partial answer plus pointing you in the right direction for a complete answer. <laughs> um, but if we go back to the open data portal, um, in the wrong, not, not the visualizations, let's get rid of those. Okay. Uh, here. So, I'm in the data set view and export. There's a soda API um, with an API endpoint. So I, for the first for the first question for Erlene, Erlen, I'm not sure how to say your name. Um, there is an API endpoint. So if you're if you know how to use that you know, here, go ahead. And then there's just the, the, the documentation is here. But if you're looking for more places to go to learn about how to use APIs, I'm not sure if, uh, Jazzy, if you have any suggestions for that. But I also wanted to mention about that that's for using the API. Like if you have a tool that that is um ingesting the api endpoint and then um you know you're writing you're writing your code in that tool and it's giving you an output um but for your question uh tomonori um if we go back out of the api oh, where is why is that not just to the download section and if i right click on the CSV and then copy link address. You can use that in a, uh, um, what's it called? An IDE that you're using your for R or for Python um, to load the data set directly into that IDE. 
Um, so there's just different ways to do it based on what you're using, but does that make sense to you? Or do you want me to explain a little more? No, that, that works. Um, so my problem is often like a labeling, like a, it's, it's much easier to read like a data in SPSS format or because uh, uh, CSV often label is messed up and you have to work on it again. But, but yeah, that works too, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think um, just starting with the CSV, making sure you're not doing the Excel or the CSV for Excel, like that, that will have the least amount of formatting in it to, to then um, translate to whatever other format. Um, it might not be perfect. There might still be some kind of D ETL, kind of data transform ETL extract. We're extracting the data from that link, then we might have to transform it as and before we load it in to the, the program that we're working with. Um, so you, there still might be some work that you need to do on that, like renaming the fields if they have a character in them that's not going to work with the tool you're using. Um, unfortunately, I think that that's, in general, that's just part of the, the um, annoying part, <laughs> an, an annoying but necessary part of working with kind of, kind of a, a data that's coming from different sources that you don't have control over. Um, but I think that like, this is a method that I've used, um, not in R, but in um, with uh, Google Colab to, in, and Python, where I just copy the link and then um, there's, a, there's a way to load it in where I'm just copying, putting that URL in quotes and it's just reading it and creating it in, in Python language is the data frame. I'm not sure what it is in R, but it's creating basically like a file that's living in that software that I can then manipulate. And so it's pretty fast process. I don't have to download anything. And this link is stable too. So you're gonna like, you, you if you have a project from a couple of months ago, you'll have it there um, in the future. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, if 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 you're running into issues like that, I think um, maybe Jazzy will mention some more about Data NYC because there's a lot of great people that are interested in these kind of things and helping each other out. Um, and I think that that's a um, sort of a general answer about the API um, as well. Like I I just haven't in my workflow worked with API endpoints and the Soda API, so I can't speak as fluently about that, but um, you can look at the documentation. It's great that there is documentation about that, but then also if you're having trouble with the documentation, there is this amazing community in, in Beta NYC of, of civic tech nerds that love to help each other out. Um, so I just give another plug for that. Thank you, Nathan. Also, um, something that's really helpful on the open data portal is that they have this feature called the uh, help desk. Uh, when you click that tab, uh, contact us, you can actually um, reach folks if you have a question about a data set, if you have a question about the API, um, you can send them a message there. Yeah. Yeah, and and they've really the team at OCI is really committed to responding to to all the inquiries that they get in. Um, you know, I mean, I think sometimes it might take a little while depending on the volume they have, especially right after Open Data Week. Um, but that's that definitely is a great place to to look for basic or advanced um, help or questions. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourselves if you want to ask questions or comments too. Oh, Nathan, looks like you got a question in the chat. What's oh, okay. Let's see. What's your favorite project using Open Data? Uh, I think that's a good question for for all of us. If anyone else wants to think about that for a minute, while well, I'll well, uh, formulate your answer in your head while I'm trying to think about what I'm going to mention. Uh, my favorite project using Open data. Um, I I think actually, I mean, one one of them really is New York City focused. Um, is that WeGov page that I mentioned? Um, I think that I just go back to that. Well, where is the link? I didn't really open it, but I think that, I think this one really sh is a great example of 
a project that's like a lot, a lot of people working together to weave together different data sources that are made possible, publicly available by the open data laws and by the efforts to maintain them. And you can look here and go to, go to DSNY. It gives you a profile of the agency and it shows you events, um, notices, uh, then you can go into finances. So we can look at the expense budget. You can look at the em employees, projects, different indicators. And I think it's just like, it's a, uh, an example of taking the information that government's producing administratively for one reason, and then trying to make it so that it's more useful for you know, journalists or people just trying to understand how the heck does this large organization work? What's it made up of? <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that's this one, the first one that comes to mind, but there, yeah, there's so many. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. The, the landmark and zoning. Yeah. They're, they are really interesting. It's, it's, yeah, there's tons of, tons of landmarks. Um, there's another data set that also shows which landmarks are calendar, basically in consideration. Um, so, you know, you could you could look through that to see what might become a landmark. <laughs> oh yeah. Since no one is asking questions, I'm gonna ask. So no. when I go to New York City uh, Open Data, uh, there's the option to sign in. Uh, yes. What's what's the benefit of making accounts and signing? Yeah, I mean, primarily so that as you're filtering, um, you can save your filters as views uh, so that you don't have to recreate that filter another time or or if like it was a complex filter and halfway through you, you lost internet connection or accidentally closed your browser window, um, you would lose that work. So it's it's just to kind of like save your you could share the views with other people if you're, you know, other people you're working with, if you like had a filtered view or if you built a visualization on top of it using that tool. But so that, that's the primary benefit. Do, do you think you can like uh, set the, what's that called? Alert? Like when new data becomes available or something like that? Oh, great question. I, do you know, do you have, I, I don't know the answer to that. Do, have you heard about that, Jazzy or, or, or Kate? I just heard that, yes, you can. Get notifications. Ah, ah I'm learning something today. That's a good, good question. Uh, that, that would be very useful. Um, yeah, I'm going to look at that right now. See, if, yeah, I'm wondering how fine grained that is. Oh yeah. Okay. So Kate says that she has one for wastewater surveillance. Um. So is it? Do you know, like, what the? Does it just tell you when it's updated, or is that like for? Would that be useful for a data set that's like infrequently updated? Okay. Yeah. All right. Right. Because like for three and one, that wouldn't really make sense because we know it's updated daily. Um. But for other data sets like that wastewater one that are updated infrequently. A notification, yeah, would be really helpful. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find where it is to show. Maybe Kate's looking for go to the data. I'm just looking around. I don't know where it is, so maybe Kate can help. But um, update because I, yeah, I want to know about this. <laughs> ah, maybe it's this the RSS feed. Yeah, I think that must be it. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so th this might be the, the subscribe. If it's still. Oh, can you give me a photo so I can share a picture? Yes. Sharing a picture shortly. Anyone here going to uh, School of Data on Saturday? Yeah. Hope to see you all there. It's such a fun conference. Yeah. Yeah. So many great topics this um, year. A lot about um, the public realm and equity. Any other questions while Kate finds the screenshot? Oh, okay. 
So OTA, but this is where the link used to be. Oh, I, okay, I see. I'm not logged in. That's why it's not showing up for, okay. Well, okay, so it's, I'm very excited to learn that that does exist. Um, so thank you, Kate. Um, and we can all look to that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bookmark this link for myself. Yeah, okay. Okay, but I guess, uh, I try to sign in, see if that works. Okay, last chance. And then I think, um, Jazzy, you might have some closing. Yeah, okay, so there is some maintenance going on. But so check back on that link that, that Kate supplied. Um, and I think if there's no more questions, uh, Jazzy, do you wanna uh, me to pass it back to you for the kind of closing? Um, yeah, that sounds great. Marks? I also think I may have found it. If you go back to where you signed in, there's a tab up there that says alerts. Um, but you have, uh, there we go. Um, where it says alerts, that may be it. Oh, alerts, yeah, uh, uh -huh. no, uh, it's the same page. yeah. Put the pages down, got no. it. Maintenance, but um, yeah, that's where, to, that's where to find it. Gotcha, all right. Um, I can talk about how y'all can stay involved. Um, nice. Next slide. I mentioned this earlier, but uh, there's the NYC Open Data Help Desk. Uh, feel you can drop a message to ask a question or report an error about a data set. Um, you'll get assistance from the person or agency that manages the data that you're using. And if you can't find the data that you're looking for, um, you can also drop that as a question as well. Um, yeah, you can also, you can reach this uh, page by going to nyc.gov slash askopendata, or like we showed before, clicking that tab up at the top that says contact us. Awesome, next slide. Yeah, and we do a lot of things. We hold a lot of events. Um, right now, Open Data Week is happening. Of course, our annual festival of community-driven events about open data. NYC School of Data is happening at uh, CUNY Law School this Saturday. Really hope you all can attend. Um, would love to see you there in person. Um, it's so special to just like meet folks that you've met only virtually in person. Um, beta bagels are where New York City offices present their recent or upcoming work that has to do with technology, data, or design. Um, and the National Day of Civic Hacking is where we bring our community together, together to take action. Um, and if you want to hear more about these events as they happen, next slide, please. Stay in touch with us. Um, you can reach us at beta.nyc slash links. Um, join our Slack. It's a really active and fun Slack. Uh, we post a lot of uh, notifications there, job openings. If you're looking for networking or just connecting with folks, we have a great monthly newsletter that we put a lot of care into. Um, you can subscribe to that. We're also on Facebook. And again, we have so many events. Um, Nathan pointed this out earlier, but I really want to showcase something that our lab does, which is called RADARS. RADAR stands for Research and Data Assistance Request. Anyone can submit a RADAR. It's basically our Community Service Data Help Desk. Um, you could submit a request for support related to open data. So say you're um, using some of this data and you want support with doing an analysis, doing a visualization, um, that's something we can help you with. Um, if you want to submit a radar, you can submit it here and I'm dropping the link in the chat. Awesome. And thank you all for coming. We really hope you stay in touch and we're so grateful for you. And thank you, Nathan. Awesome. Uh, picture. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, and thanks for Kate for telling us where to go for the last one, the, the, the login. It is, uh, if you're logged in, View a data set on the main page, you'll see watch this data set button. Wait, I, I just, uh, I really gotta see if this works because I logged in here. Sorry, I know you had your nice ending there, Jazzy, but let's see if we can. I like this better, it's live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we can all, we're all, uh, am I logged in? I'm logged in. Where's the watch this data set? 
A main page is he watches data set. Oh, main page. Okay, down the prime primer. Okay, yep, yep. Where is no, 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 let's get that. Back to the primer. I'm logged in. Watch this data set. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. That is that is awesome. Um, so that will go to your email. Okay, great. Uh I think uh we will end it there. Yeah, so thanks for listening and uh, hey, happy exploring open data. Cool. Thank you so much, everybody.